Sports broadcaster and writer Ian Carter has been the BBC's golf correspondent for 12 years. In that time, he's got to know the biggest names in the game, so Anna Whiteley sat down with him to discuss this year's major storylines and how they came together in his new book, The Majors 2015, The Thrilling Battle for Golf's Greatest Trophies. Ian, the thrilling battle for golf's greatest trophies, and that's exactly what it was. The battle for the number one spot has never been tighter. What stood out for you this year about the majors more than any other year? I just think, you know, from when the, the, the project was first suggested to me to write the majors this year, I, I sort of sat down and thought about it. Well, yes, McElroy could co complete the career Grand Slam at Augusta, so that's going to be special. It's going to be noteworthy, whatever happens. Um, the US Open was going to a brand new course. I mean, only seven or eight years old to be staging a US Open, that's unheard of. So that was going to be fascinating. An Open Championship at St Andrews, that was, by dint of being at St Andrews, is going to be fascinating. And of course, we'd had two thrilling PGAs at Whistling Straits. So I kind of thought from the outset that it was going to be a story well worth telling, um, but I didn't quite grasp just how interesting it would be and the way that it turned out. And, you know, I've been doing the, my job for the BBC on the golf circuit since 2003 and, and certainly in that period I think as a collection of majors in any, in any single year this has been the, the most interesting of them all. Mind you I, I would say that I've just written a book about it but I, I, I genuinely do feel that. So let's just talk about Spieth. He proved his dominance from day one at the Masters. What was the golf world's reaction to that performance and what he's gone on to achieve afterwards? We knew what a special talent was there and, and the way that on debut 12 months earlier he came so close to, to winning the green jacket suggested that he would have the game for Augusta. He was in fantastic form but he, he took that tournament by the scruff of the neck from, from the word go and there were moments when other players got close to him, Phil Mickelson, Justin Rose and, and he was almost like a, a rugby player surging towards the line and he would just put the arm out and just fend off the challenges and, and would not be diverted from, from that goal and it was a thrilling performance. At the press conference at the end of his victory where he gave the most wonderful account of how he'd gone about the, the final round and, and secured his first major title and at the end he kind of suggested, well, I'm the only one who can do the Grand Slam. And everyone sort of laughed in the, in, the, in the room. But by the time we got to St Andrews, we weren't laughing, were we? Because he'd won the, the, the US Open. And that was through sheer competitive grit, I think, that he, that he got that job done. Um, and obviously, Dustin Johnson, three-putting the last, handed it to him. But would he have three-putted the last? Had it been someone else who was sitting with a clubhouse lead? We'll never know, but I suspect that it might have been different. Unlike the Tiger era where he dominated every major, the field is now so open, Spieth, Day and Rory all at the top. What is that doing for the game, do you think? I think what, what is significant, and you touched on it in the question about the, the Tiger Woods era, and these are players that are, are born out of the image, the golfing image of, of Tiger Woods, but I think what they also bring is another dimension because all three of them are amazing ambassadors for the game. They communicate extremely well, whether it's through the established media or they embrace social media. And that is hugely encouraging for the game of golf. We're seeing encouraging television viewing figures in, in America at a time when Tiger Woods has faded from, from the picture. He was the driver, but I do think that these guys are really on the verge of being able to, to pick up that mantle. They're not quite there yet, but I think in the next couple of years, they, they certainly will be. Well, one man who's certainly come into the light, Jason Day, he hugely deserved that PGA Championship win. What do you think that has unlocked for him as a player, and what can we expect from him next year? I think what was really, really important was his victory at the Canadian Open the week after the Open Championship. I remember commentating for the BBC and standing by that 18th green when Day had a putt to take him into the playoff, which was ultimately won by Zach Johnson, and he left it short. And the agony that was etched on his face as he sort of put his hand to his brow and squeezed his eyes shut, you really did feel for him. And, and it, it was almost as though at that moment he said, no more, no more. If I'm banging on that door, it's going to open. And he played with that force at Whistling Straits, put himself in position, got himself to the top of the leaderboard, and nothing was going to get in his way. The brand of golf that he played at Whistling Straits was as good as anybody played in the majors, not just in 2015, but 
in a very, very long time. And 20 under par, the lowest score in a major relative to, to par, kind of backs that theory up. It, was, it really was very, very impressive. And especially when you consider that, as I say, he had to haul himself off the ground, literally, at the US Open with all these health concerns. Um, and put those behind him and still motored on and, and put himself not just in that mix with Spieth and McElroy, but, but firmly in that mix. And uh, he's such a talent and going forward, I think that he will be emboldened by that major victory and, and many more will come. And finally, the last man in the top three, Rory. This time, 12 months ago, he was all everyone was talking about. It must have been so frustrating this year with his injury. What's your take on his year? When he went to Augusta, the, all the attention and the hullabaloo that was around him because of the potential of the career Grand Slam didn't do him any favours, and I think he's admitted that. At the US Open, he didn't quite get going until the final day and then had a, a, a fantastic charge that did put him on the, on the cusp of, of contending, and then it came to, to a halt on the 15th when he, he dropped a shot for, after a tee shot that inches more would have stayed and given him a birdie chance that seriously would have given him an opportunity. And then the injury came and it was a savage blow it seemed, not just to him but to the season. He was going to the old course, defending champion at the Open, a golf course that set up perfectly for him. The weather conditions were such that it was going to be soft as well which would have played into his hands. And this would be his chance to respond to Jordan Spieth muscling in on his territory. And how would he cope with that? And we, we'd never find out. Um, he came back at, at the PGA, decent effort to get back, testament to his powers of, of recovery in a physical sense. But it was a season lost because of, the, because of the injury. There's no doubt about that. But he is still, in my opinion, the most naturally talented golfer on the planet. I'm sure he'll come back stronger and with even more motivation in 2016. And finally, for 2016, what can we expect and what would you love to see? I want this trio to, to kick on and, and, and sort of establish themselves in the way that, that tennis has benefited for a decade of, of Federer, Nadal, Djokovic, Murray. And it's really a, a great opportunity for those who run the game. And there are new figures in charge at the European Tour, at the RNA. It's up to them to absolutely make the most of this era, because if they do, then golf can really go from strength to strength. <laughs>